I noticed that we match. I know. <laughs> well, welcome everyone to Horror in Color. We're here with director Lee Ann Kerr, the director and writer and producer of Student Body. Your background goes into theater. How has that affected how you kind of perceive horror as an audience member? Oh, that's such a great, that's such a great question, Jose. I appreciate that. I ended up doing a lot of Shakespeare and classics. I worked with some Shakespeare companies here and in London, trained classically. All of that really equipped me to work with actors in my films as a director. I feel like I can work with the actors in a more informed and empathic way. And then in terms of coming from theater to horror, I think that so much of what makes something good, especially with horror, is pacing and rhythm. And so much of what you learn in Shakespeare and classical acting and the Greeks and all of that kind of stuff that I was very nerdy about is, is rhythm and rhythm in how you speak and rhythm in how the scene flows and how the power shifts occur. And I think it was Jordan Peele that remarked that also comedy, both comedy and horror are so reliant on rhythm and pacing. That's something that is always so paramount for me as a filmmaker. It all feels musical in a way, just like Shakespeare does. I'm not saying my script is like Shakespeare. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Music almost feels like a character in and of itself in this project. I love score. I love the component that music plays in film. I love it so much and it was so important to me. So I think from the inception, I was very inspired by Disaster Pieces score from It Follows. Um, and just how visceral that experience is because of what Disaster Piece brought to that film. And I also think it's a horror, modern horror classic, but I really wanted the score to just really fill your bones when you're watching the film. I got to work with um, Alex Libertore, who is an incredibly gifted composer. He just was able to, without even us needing to talk about it at first, was able to just pick up um, just what, what the moments needed in terms of um, texture and also in terms of rhythm. We had extensive conversations. I'm always inspired by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross and that the work that they do with David Fincher's films in particular. So we definitely had like a working vocabulary of what we were kind of trying to achieve. It was a very satisfying, um, satisfying uh, creative partnership. I love that you're referencing a movie like It Follows and you know, you quote Jordan Peele. Another kind of sensibility weaved into this is your reverence for horror. I really grew up pretty addicted to Hitchcock. You know, even his weirder stuff like 39 Steps just like was very, became very entranced with his whole filmography. We love the shower scene in Psycho. We love the chestburster scene in Alien, but those actually occur in the midpoint of both films and how the front half of both films are dealing with relationships. They're dealing with power dynamics and they're dealing with imperfect people making imperfect decisions. It's interesting, you know, I've heard the term slow burn with student body and I agree with that and I, I love a good slow burn, but you know, some of these classics that we, we hold up, they, they are slow burns. It takes a while for Marion Crane to get to the Bates Motel, it takes half the film for the shower scene. So I really think that those those early influences really um, came into play when it came to um, structuring the story. Do you have any specific horror movies that take place in high school that you <laughs> particularly look to for influence or maybe just that you love? You know, the most horror-y high school film that I think was directly influenced was Heathers. The inspiration from Heathers was the way that um, the characters speak. It's so idiosyncratic. It reminds me of Share and Clueless, which is also another one of my favorite films. With Heathers, it was definitely kind of going down that, you know, darker path with the teenagers, but also in the dialogue, and I'd say especially with the character of Merritt, how she speaks and the turns of phrases she uses. I just loved how Heathers, you know, created this kind of vernacular in and of itself. Fuck me gently with a chainsaw. F me gently with a chainsaw comes from Heather. Like what a great turn of phrase. So that was definitely very influential. And so I'd say, Jose, it's le for me, it was less about a horror teen film where it was like, okay, one to one, that's the inspiration and more about like, oh, how is it, you know, taking kind of the pacing from Alien, from Psycho, combining it with like, you know, this idiosyncratic young speech from movies like Clueless or Heathers 
And then also like creating a breakfast club like dynamic with five teenagers. They're stuck in school on a Saturday with a horrible principal. And that's, you know, the farthest it goes, but it's like, oh, but what if we took it another step and they're really stuck in the school? They can't get out. You know, they have these power dynamics and then things get actually quite dangerous. Not your fault, Jane. So I'd say it was a mix of horror films and then teen films and then kind of synthesizing them. I enjoyed casting so much. Um, my casting director, Russell Boast, is a wonderful, wonderful um, person casting director. So I think with, with the role of Mr. Amsbach, you know, we were... Christian Camargo was always at the top of my list. I was so excited when he accepted the role. I knew his work from Dexter season one, from Petty Dreadful, from Hurt Locker, and he's also um, has done a lot of theater, Shakespeare. So I, I just always admired his career and him. So that was a great process where he accepted the role and we were able to move forward with him. And then for the kids, for the teens, um, it was definitely more of like a boots on the ground casting process where you know, we did this even before the pandemic, I'm sure it's more prevalent now, but we were accepting some, you know, Zoom auditions, some electronic things for people out of town, and then also people coming in the room. Um, and it was a really rewarding process of, you know, definitely deliberately making sure that we had a diverse cast, because as much as I love John Hughes, you know, he was a product of his time, and it's five white kids, and I just wanted to make sure that this was gonna be more representative of actually the place, the country we live in. And it's not just all, all the same looking kind of folks. All these kids, you know, they're cool, they're rebellious, they got this vibe. Um, the other four, you know, Jane's a little more hard on her sleeves. But I think at the end of the day, they're all, they're all a little scared and they're all a little freaked out. Um, they're all anxious about their own lives, um, about their relationships. And that vulnerability, I think, was so important to find for all five of them and finding actors that could, could bring that out in a really human way. And they all did such beautiful, beautiful jobs. You still have to be so firm and intentional about what you want because we would have, you know, casting calls where we would be like, oh, we're, we're specifically like really wanting to look for, you know, certain kinds of people, certain faces, you know, we still got bombarded with tons of you know actors who were wonderful and who all look the same and the actor and you know the agents the managers they're all pushing their clients and you know they did wonderful work this is an, an intentional decision that we want to make and we want to make sure that this you know this whole creative process isn't just another john hughes project where everybody looks the same what kinds of hopes do you have for the industry and how things might change from here on out as long as you're very steadfast in your intentions and in what you're looking for, you know, we're seeing where these things are now possible, where it's not just going to be, oh, well, this is how people look if they're a hero. This is how people look if they're, you know, the romantic interest. You know, with Student Body, I really wanted female characters that are morally problematic. And I think that a lot of times in the past, women get to be either saints or sinners, and there's kind of no gray zone. And for both, especially Merritt and Jane, I wanted those characters to explore. Jane seems to be this innocent, but what if she does some things that make us uncomfortable? And also Merritt seems to be this Regina George, but she has moments of vulnerability where maybe you start to see why she's so harsh to people around her. I wanted there to be that complexity so that females aren't just, you know, either like, you know, a mother figure or like a femme fatale and that's it. Do you have any women in horror particularly that you admire? I think the work that Jennifer Kent is doing right now is really extraordinary um, with the Babadook and the Nightingale. Please pardon me if I get this wrong. Rose Glass, who is behind St. Maud, that A24 horror film, I think was great. Julia Decarnot, I think, um, who directed Titan and Raw. So we're seeing that incredible perspective. I think that there are a lot of really exciting voices. And as you say, you know, I think especially high school girls, like young girls, that has so often been this male gaze where it's, you know, they exist to be sexualized. They exist to be, you know, these hot teen girls. And I really wanted to show that 
their journeys, their actual journeys aren't about that at all. It's about them trying to figure out their own lives and their own relationships. What are your biggest hopes for it? I'm excited for people to hopefully connect to these characters and feel, feel an emotional connection to them and to Jane's journey. There are two kinds of people, Jane. <laughs> Fiddle people, hammer people. And it's my job to make you pick up the hammer. Tuesday, February 8th, Student Body will be available to rent and purchase on all major VOD platforms. So Amazon, Apple, iTunes, Google Play, all those things. I'm on Instagram sometimes at at LanHu, L-A-A-N-W-H-O. And then I have my website, LeanneKerr.com. I truly appreciate your point of view, your perspective. You're welcome on our platform at any time. Thank you so much, Jose. This was a wonderful interview. I really, really enjoyed doing it with you.